Hey, this is Horner, and this is the 15.2 free response question for representations of changes in momentum. This is the only free response question for this section. That means there will be many more in the next two sections. Uh, in this one, we've got a figure, and it represents two carts. So here's your two carts that make up a system. The mass of one cart and magnet is one kilogram, and the mass of the other is five. The carts are initially at rest on a frictionless track, so that's important. They're released from rest, from rest, they're released from rest, and exert a repulsive force on each other. So when you let go of them, they take off in opposite directions. The track is not quite horizontal, with the right side slightly lower than the left side. The speeds of the cart are measured over a 10 second interval, and the graph shows the momentum of the two carts as a function of time uh, as they move along the x-axis. So based on the graph where the measurement started at the instant the carts were released, well, check this out. It says that the carts are initially at rest. So when they're released, they should be at rest. If they're at rest, what would their velocity be? So velocity is equal to zero meters per second at rest. That means that if your momentum is equal to mass times velocity, if your velocity is zero, your momentum should be zero. So think about that as we answer this. Based on the graph where the measurement started at the instant the carts were released, justify your answer. So for this one, the answer is no. So when we do A, B, C, D, A is no. Letter B is momentum is equal to mass times velocity. For C, we can say, well, looking at the chart, looking at the graph, both carts have momentum which is greater than zero. <laughs> and so now when we draw it together, remember we can cross these off as we go, we can say since the momentum is greater than zero, the speed of each cart is greater than zero. And so the graph does not show when the carts were released. Uh, why is that? Think about it. If they were released, then your momentum should be equal to zero. So you really would have a dot here that represents both, and then you would have the dots as they come up. Uh, so then you would probably have one here, and here, and here, and then they could follow along. But obviously they're not there. So no, the measurements were not started when the carts were released. Basic physics, momentum is mass times velocity. Looking at the graphs, both carts have a momentum greater than zero, and since the momentum is greater than zero, the speed of each cart is greater than zero, so the graph does not show when the carts were released. So that is a lot easier. Next thing, calculate the magnitude. Oh, by the way, that whole statement is worth a whopping, are you ready for this? One point. But you had to have all of it in order to get the one point. Calculate the magnitude of the external force exerted on the system. So when we have these two cars and they are pushed together, there are magnets on the inside. And one of the magnets is pushing the car this way and this one is pushing this way. And the magnets are outside the system. So if we were doing this and we were thinking about energy, we could do an LOL and inside would be the carts and the earth and the track, but the magnets would be on the outside so that your external force would just generating work. Um, okay, so what do we need to do to do this? Probably the easiest thing to do is to think about the force on each car. So the force on the five car, and we want the force on the one kilogram car. We know that force times time, so force times time, is equal to mass times velocity. And we also know that mass times velocity is momentum. So F times T is equal to momentum. 
And that means that our force is equal to the momentum divided by time. So we'll do that again. Force times time is impulse. Mass times velocity is impulse. But impulse is just change in momentum. So force times time is equal to the change in momentum. And if I know the force, I can say, I'm sorry, if I want to find the force, I can say, well, that's momentum divided by time. So that's the stretch. That's the thing you have to do. If that's true, then we can find for both carts, F5 and for F1, we can find out what their uh, force is. So we just find the change in momentum over the change in time for each one. Change in momentum over the change in time. So to do that, we need to take a look at what the momentum is at the beginning and at the end. So for this one, we see that the momentum at the end is about 1.25, and here it's about 0.25. And for the one on the bottom, this one's about point, negative 0.6, and this one looks like, I don't know, let's call it negative 0.2. So we need to find basically the slope of each one of these lines. And if you find the slope of the lines, so remember this is slope, change in y over change in x, that tells you the force. All right, here we go. So this first one we said was 1.25 minus 0.25 divided by, and um, the change in time here was 10 seconds. So how do I know it was 10 seconds? Well, that's what it says, 10 seconds. Cool. So now that I've got that, this one is equal to a positive 0 0.10 newtons. For the second one, we said that its, start, its uh, final momentum is negative 0.6. That's minus a negative 0.2. So remember, it's the final value minus the initial, and here this is negative. So negative and negative is going to be positive divided by 10. And we end up with negative 0.04 newtons. So those are the two forces. What do we need to do in order to um, find out what the uh, external force is? So the external force, so the sum of the forces are going to be equal to the force on number one plus the force on number five. We know the force on number five. We know the force on number one. So let's go ahead and put those in. So force on number five is, well, we can go ahead and put it in force number one, 0.04 plus 0 0.10, and so I'm really just taking 0 0.10 minus 0 0.04, and that gives me 0 0.06 newtons, and that is the external force, or the sum of the forces on the system. How many points do we get for doing this? We get several, so the first point comes from doing this type of thing, where you're going through and saying, well, how do, am I going to solve for force? So that would be one point. Um, you get uh, one point for showing that. You get one point really for uh, going through and doing each one of these things. And then you get one point for going through and finding what the sum of the forces is. So that's four points in that part. Next time says, suppose the experiment is repeated with different carts so that the masses of the cart plus the magnet are two kilograms and four kilograms, would your answer to part B be different with the new masses? So here we would say our answer is no. Um, basic physics. So uh, here we know that the individual masses don't change the mass of the system. So we know that the mass of the system is the same. So, uh, yeah, so the, the, the mass of the system is the same. Um, that's really citing evidence, I guess. So that's really our C. And then in letter B, we really can just, well, letter B, uh, that's our basic physics. Um, so we know that the sum of the forces is still equal to the force of number two plus the force of number six of the six kilogram. Uh, notice that here we've got um, 
oops, sorry, force of 2 plus force of 4. And that equals uh, our two forces here together. We're going to be the same. Um, so the outside force is still the same. And so the mass of the system is the same. And uh, therefore, we can say the effect, so the mass of the system is the same. We have the same sum of the forces here. And so for letter D, we can just say that the net effect remains the same because the individual masses, the changes in the masses don't matter. So changes in masses don't matter as long as the total system mass remains the same. All right, so let's just go back again. So answer is no, it's not going to be different. Our basic physics is the sum of the forces is still equal to the two forces, and it doesn't matter what they are. So plus F5, okay, so these forces are going to be the same. The force of the 4 and the 2 and the 5 and the 1, the external force is going to be the same. Uh, the mass of the system is the same, so the total mass of the system, so the total mass or the mass of the system is the same, and changes in the masses don't matter as long as the total system mass remains the same, um, and that gives you the same force on the outside. And so, really, here there's two points. Uh, if you say the mass of the system is the same, you get a point, and then if you explain why that's important with this outside force, then you get that other point. And that is the end of what you need to do for this problem.